Having a slow, unreachable or sometimes disconnecting internet is frustrating, especially when you're connecting with the Wi-Fi. It's been happening to me lately when I shifted to a different room in my house. From the room to the main internet router, there are a lot of sofas, walls, TVs and a lot of stuff blocking those signals. I'm sure this must have happened to you at some point in time. So what I did was simple and turns out that you don't need to be an engineer or a nerd to sort this problem out. But this isn't a free solution and not a do-it-yourself either. So if you're looking for a no-spend easy way out, then this video is not for you. But if you want a long-term durable solution, then you must watch this video. So first thing we need a router or some sort of Wi-Fi extender. I would definitely recommend a router. So I went online and looked for routers with good reviews on Amazon. These starts from $10 and go all the way up to hundreds of dollars. Looking for a slightly budget, good value option, I came across the TP-Link EC120, also known as Archer AC750. This one is coming for around $35 and had some really good reviews. It's a dual band router, which means at the same time, you get both the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz signal each for 300 and 433 megabits per second in bandwidth. You have these three external antennas, which are more than enough to provide a stable Wi-Fi signal. And from the reviews and my personal experience, they give you an excellent coverage through. Mainly 2.4 GHz signal provide a more spread, but sacrifices speed. Whereas the 5 GHz Wi-Fi will provide a faster internet, but in a closed range, which means that the 5 GHz is more ideal if you do a lot of video streaming like Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube and so on. For setup, you can put it on the table or hang up on the wall. Once it's arrived, all I needed was a long Ethernet cable coming from the main ONT broadband router to the room which is nearby where I wanted to set up the new TP-Link router. Fortunately, I had that long cable already there so I didn't need to buy that long Ethernet cable. I just connected that cable with the TP-Link, powered it up and used the small Ethernet cable which came in the box with the TP-Link router to connect it with my laptop. You can use any one of these ports to connect the wire coming from the ONT or broadband router. Thereon I used this simple guide from TP-Link. All you need is login and password which is admin to log into the control panel of your TP-Link router. Here you can change the name of your Wi-Fi connections the passwords and so on settings. In my case, I just followed a quick guide and didn't change anything whatsoever. That means that I'll be using the same SSIDs, the same Wi-Fi names and the same passwords printed on the back of my router. After the quick setup is complete, all you need to do is reboot and your internet should be working. For me, it wasn't. Turns out that I need to go and disable my DHCP settings. That's cause some ISPs do not provide the DHCP service and you may have to disable it. Now, all I did was reboot and voila, the internet is working. You can just disconnect your laptop from the router and remove this ethernet cable. You're ready to connect to any wireless device to either one of these two connections using a password and enjoy a stress-free internet Wi-Fi experience. So that's really everything about extending your Wi-Fi range. I hope it's fairly easy to follow, but still if you're stuck somewhere, then just a comment away. And if you like what you see, then hit the like and subscribe to the channel. If you think it's been a helpful video for you, then maybe you'd consider sharing it with your friends. I'll see you soon with another video, Telling Game Forest Tech, signing out.